Well, today marks Long Tan Day, which is also known as Vietnam Veterans Day. It comes as the Australian movie called Danger Close, The Battle of Long Tan, opens in cinemas, capturing that historic battle. The last Australian killed at Long Tan during the final moments of the battle was Private Paul Large. Two of his sisters, Robin Wesley and Sandra Fleming, joined us earlier, as well as a producer of the film, Martin Walsh, who told us about his inspiration for making Danger Close. Uh, well, it was mainly about modernising the Anzac narrative. You know, uh, I, I grew up not knowing anything about the Vietnam War, let alone, you know, the Battle of Long Tan. And um, when I was serving in um, two commando company, one commando regiment, Army Reserve, um, I came across a book on the battle and couldn't put it down and then was very angry afterwards that I never knew anything about it. So um, I just felt that, um, you know, the, the time was, you know, right to immortalise, you know, this entire generation of Vietnam veterans on, on screen um, and help modernise the, the narrative because most of it's been about World War One. Um, and your film was very poignant for the family of Private Paul Large. Uh, he takes a, a main role in this film. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, um, we really needed a character um, that would encapsulate all of the values, you know, of those young boys, you know, that were conscripted um, and the professional soldiers, which were actually a little bit younger than the conscripted ones. Um, so Paul was, you know, the ideal, you know, person to, to really, um, you know, provide that focus throughout the film and importantly, a relationship with the commanding officer, who's the other, you know, important character in the film, um, Harry Smith. Robin and Sandra, you have a very personal connection to this film. What is that connection, Sandra? Well, Paul Large was our brother. He was killed in the latter stages of the battle. And um, that's really mm. the connection. He was the only boy of six children, um, of whom I'm the youngest. Mm. And... Um, Yes, it was a very, very great loss for our family. I'm sure. And what was it like to hear that his story was going to be told in this way? Well, I think we were, all of the family, were very, very proud yeah. and very, very thankful, even, you know, with the sorrow that we still held it in our hearts for the loss of our only brother, whom we all adored, and um, we know he adored all of his sisters. Yeah. So it must have been an emotional experience to see the film for the first very. time and to, to almost relive the experience. Very, yeah. Yes. Even though we knew what was going to happen, what would happen at the end of the film, it was still gut-wrenching yes. just to sit there just and, waiting and waiting it for it. Mm. Yes. Martin, did you work with the family of Paul? Yeah, so we, uh, you know, I first met um, the family when I made my documentary in 2006 um, and they were kind enough to share a lot of Paul's stories, you know, with us and um, obviously, uh, not obviously, but uh, Paul had written quite a few letters back to his family and his family had written letters, you know, to Paul um, and then uh, an army um, chaplain, um, put together a service, Michael Taylor, Michael Taylor. Um, and he put together a little booklet of all those letters and also lots of recollections from Paul's friends. Um, so that was, you know, an absolutely, um, you know, invaluable resource for us. Um, I was actually sitting behind Sandra and Robin at the first screening of our film at the Sydney Film Festival and I wasn't watching the screen at that moment, you know, when Paul, Paul is killed, I was watching, <laughs> watching them and it was gut-wrenching, you know, because, um, you know, it was pretty impactful for them. But unbeknownst to us, um, Daniel Webber's mum, Daniel Webber plays Paul Large in the film, she was actually sitting in front of Robin and uh, Sandra in the cinema and... Um, you know, we didn't know that till afterwards and she was pretty emotional with Yes, yeah, so it was lovely having her there. Mm. We didn't know until later and she turned around and introduced herself to us, mm. which was lovely. Why do you think Australians don't really know a lot about the Battle of Long Tan? I really think because um, it's no longer taught to people. Mum and dads don't talk about it to their kids. It's... Well, Just probably because they something don't know. that happened. Mm. They probably don't know mm. because, you know, when these seven, 18 young men were brought back to Australia, they'd landed out at Richmond Air Base and they were just taken off the plane and put in a hangar mm. overnight. 
no flags, no nothing. nothing. Mm. And so it was sort of, it was a bit, it was, it a, little was bit a little bit hidden, wasn't it? It was, the whole, yeah. it was yes. The whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Do you hope this movie will change that? I hope so. Mm. I think, I think it has already. Mm. Mm. I'm sure it has. Martin, when creating a movie like this, how do you strike a balance between telling the two sides of the story and telling the, the horror of war, but also the human element of it as well? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, uh, there's a great line that Ridley Scott used when he was making Black Hawk Down, and that is, um, you know, a documentary is a photograph, a movie is a painting. Um, now, I'm lucky enough, you know, to have made um, the photograph uh, and now making the painting, because trying to fit effectively, you know, 48 hours within a two hour movie format is extremely difficult, mm. um, particularly because so many different units were involved. I mean, there were 108 Australians in the battle, um, you know, the armoured personnel carriers, the, the chopper pilots everything else um, and try and give it a sense of authenticity at the same time that 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 was an incredible um, challenge um, but our script writer Stuart Beatty who's probably one of our most successful writers Pirates of the Caribbean Collateral um, 310 to Yuma Russell Crowe um, he just wrote an incredible script for us that really created this intense emotional impact for audiences i mean even i'm surprised by the reaction that audiences are having and the stories that are coming through are you know nobody people are saying that they've never sat in a cinema where every single person has sat right through until the end credits in complete silence except for some audible crying um, and then many of the audiences are actually applauding um, some even standing applause uh, one came through last night um, in darwin some people went and a bunch of US Marines, you know, like almost 100 US Marines were in the cinema and very, you know, noisy and like, you know, young boys normally are. And they said complete opposite at the end of the film, like yeah. not a word, complete silence. And they stayed to the very end. So, mm -hmm. And Sandra and Robin, it's a bittersweet day for you today also because you're going to be honouring your brother at a ceremony in Sydney. Yes, that's right. Yep. What will you be doing? I'm going to read a little a few little things about Paul that um, growing up in Cooler and about being my big brother and uh, I also have a letter to read um, that he wrote to mum and dad two days before he was killed and Robin's going to be my backup, she's my support. Fantastic, you <laughs> need that. Yes. Robin and Sandra and also Martin, thank you so much for speaking with us this morning. It's a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you very thank much. You very much. Thank you.